G'day guys, Bok Mac Supercoach with DR and welcome to the Round 7 Review. It was a bit of a bugger of a weekend for me, not all Supercoach related. Long story short, my pony got out of the yard, decided to take a stroll down the main street. Bit of a mission getting her back in. And the next day, I was zooming down the hill on my BMX riding with my son. My phone jumped out of my pocket, smashing to 100 pieces on the concrete. But look, on a positive note, my lines took out the giants, which was really good. For me, anyway, as a Lion supporter, not too good for the Giant supporters, and also picked up a new phone today. So, all good in the hood now. But, look, back to Supercoach. It was around with some massive scores. Blokes like English, Gorn, they played out of their skins, went gangbusters. And other rucks, well, I'll talk about my current R2 in a moment. But, on another positive note, there wasn't too much injury carnage, which was nice. And the two most popular trading targets of the week both played well and delivered us with some nice scores. But... How did I go? Well, I scored 22-27, which I think was probably just a little bit under par. I'm still ranked inside the top 3K, which is nice. And I'm surprised that I only dropped 91 spots in the rankings. I was expecting maybe to balloon out to possibly the 4K mark. Just looking at some other scores that I had in my leagues, but uh, to be within that top 3K still, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. So let's have a look at how the team went. After a chat with the great man, George, I decided to say goodbye to Segler and bring in Rankin. And then I traded some dead wood in BZT to Simpson via some DPP. And so far, very happy with both of those trades. And most importantly, gave me a big war chest that I'll definitely be using this week and going two up for the first time this season. But in defence, Doherty, another below par game. Certainly still a top eight defender in my books, but I'm not too sure if he'll end up being the highest averaging defender. I think that'll probably go to the Seagull. Maybe even the next man, James Sicily. Wasn't it good to see the good James Sicily again this week? We can see the bad James Sicily every now and then. But look, contested intercept marks, nice meters gained, and was a shining light in a pretty dull Hawthorne side. Look, they're a pretty hard team to watch at the moment. Titch, he doesn't seem like his usual self. So some alarm bells down there at Glen Ferry, but... Sis, he'll be a top eight defender and is a good option to bring into the side if you don't already have him. Ridley, probably his quietest game for the season up to date. But look, if 92 is an average game for him, then we can be pretty happy with this pick, I think. Tom Duday took the captaincy for this week and played one of his best games. I was worried at quarter time. He was only on eight. But in the third quarter, he played one of the best quarters I've seen from a defender this year. Contested in set marks galore. Most disposals hit the intended target and just played a really solid captain's game. And probably my best trade in today is I picked him up around the 300k mark. And he's a real chance, I think anyway, in my opinion, of being a solid keeper. Stephen Hill, yeah, not overly happy with the 50. He turned the ball over a couple of times. Just wasn't damaging enough to have a real impact on the game. Brando, he didn't play. Hopefully he can force his way back into the side when he's fully recovered from his injury that he shouldn't be too far away. It's a pretty hard team to probably break into at the moment though. Stars, I didn't field, but again, pretty average score. I'm actually planning on holding him for the season as my D7, as I really like his job security and his DPP status. I may be forced to trade if other rookies don't generate enough cash, but hopefully I'm just looking to hold. And Johnny Noble, well, he was a late in, which was awesome for me. Massive shout out to Spills, who messaged me about him as a late in. I would have known about that, so good on you, Spills, legend, mate. And also, I'm doing a podcast with Spills this week, so I'll pop the link up for that during the week. And um, yeah, really looking forward to talking some super coach with Spills. But I ended up looping, looping him, sorry, taking his score, which was the right option now. Decided to play him or take his score over playing Stars, which got me, what was that, 11 points. But 11 points, you know, can make a big difference in this game that we play. But look, he, uh, was again, a bit of a tale of two halves. Noble had an awesome first half. I think he scored about 50 points in the first half, but only had about 14 points, 12 points maybe after half time, which was a little bit disappointing. But hopefully he plays again this week and, you know, can go up to around that 300k mark, as I said, and make us a little bit more coin, which we, we probably didn't expect before coming into last week. Onto the midfield, well, Lockie Neal, his first blemish of the season, but that was expected against De Boer. He actually played a really unselfish game, you know, blocking for his teammates, 
doing the one percenters. I don't think he'll have too many other scores like this. And it goes to show that even if you shut down Neil, blokes like Lyon, Zorko, Berry, McCluggage, they'll all step up and carry more of the load. And I think that's why Brisbane is such a strong team at the moment because they don't play as individuals and they genuinely play for their mates. Dangerfield and McRae, well, they were my best two uber premium buys in last week's stock market video, and they did nothing to dismiss that. Danger, I think he's back to his best, having a real impact on the game. Since I traded him in round two, I think he's gone on to average around the 115 mark. So he's actually been a pretty successful trade in so far. McRae, I think he's back to his best also. So another guy that you can look to get into your sides, I think with some pretty good confidence at the moment. Josh Simpkin, it was his worst score of the year, which I'll forgive him for because he injured his ankle very early on in the game, spent a lot of time off the ground, flared up again in the second quarter, and I was actually worried that he wouldn't even be coming back on, but he managed to come back under some duress, and at least he got to a 50+. plus. His time on ground was terrible, as was his disposal efficiency, to be quite honest, but a brave effort just to stay out there, in my opinion anyway. Cripps, his last couple of scores, they've been concerning, but the positive thing is that many people are in the same boat. He's owned by more than 50% of coaches. But look, he was one of my auto selects this year, but the last few weeks, they've been really underwhelming. Brayshaw, wrap with this pick. Huge second half, a little bit quieter in the second half, but super impressed again. You know, tough, reliable, worked hard to improve his disposal efficiency and has the perfect role for super coach especially with Fife not on the side. And he's gone from a mediocre pick to a really solid pick in a matter of three weeks. Adam Cherry, he's also playing well for the Anchormen. So for Freo supporters, I think that's a really good sign in a year that hasn't had too many positives so far. Jack Viney, I said last week that Jack's back and he continued on his hot streak this week. Real concern with his 60 a couple of weeks ago. Some people jump ship, but those people that'd be spewing now similar to how I'm feeling about trading at Houston before he decided to start scoring well. But look, Viney is a tackling machine, and I really love watching his facial expressions as he's hunting the ball. He literally puts every ounce of his strength, you know, power, energy into every chase that he makes. And I'm just loving his one percenters, impressed with his more efficient ball use as well. And he landed a couple of really nice inside 50s on the weekend also. And I'm gaining confidence that he could be a keeper, to be honest. And with the amount of trades that I have left combined with the amount of rookies on field, I'll probably have to keep him anyway, I think. I'll go on to Simpson. The tail of two halves for the newest recruit was looking a little bit dodgy at half time and then hit back in a big way with a 50 point second half. And I think that injuries to Narkel, Selwood, who else was it? Clark as well. I think that bodes well for his job security and he's set to make us some rapid cash. You know, a mature body can find the footy. And in a team riddled with injuries, I think that's a pretty good formula. Rivers, I just used him as a loophole. He's most likely a dead rookie that we can use to loop in either our mids or defense, depending on where you got him. Buderick, uh, yeah, good to uh, Benel, decent score from him. Uh, look, give me more confidence than he may be an on-field option for my M8 position just for the time being. Starting to make some nice cash also, which is pretty handy for him. Just great to see him playing footy again, Benel. I think there were some big question marks just on him getting back. And Buderick, yeah, so like Stas, I'm probably looking to hold him. So some may say I'm crazy, but again, I like his job security and his DPP status. Things could change, but I'm probably looking to hold him. And look, what I'm looking for in a D7, M9, F7 is job security. And if I can get that added bonus of DPP, I think that's something that we should all really, really look at and each to their own, but that's just what I'm looking for. And another thing I'll quickly say about blokes like Stars and Buderick is even though they've been disappointing during the last three weeks, they've also shown the capability to go 80 plus as well. So we haven't seen it lately, but the scoring potential is there. On to the rucks. So Brody Grundy, well, back to his best. He was an easy VC choice for me. He wasn't up against strong competition, but he did what he needed to go to do, sorry, and dominated Fort. Naismith, he's the R3 piggy bank. He's been a decent loop. I'll cash him in very soon. And either make what's at about 170k by trading to a Combin or even more if I go to Conroy at 102. This bloke, Mark Shitney, he's given me the absolute pits. He's gone. I'm actually doing it now. Oh, this gives me great joy. 
And although it's come weeks too late, the big fella, Max Gorn, is finally in my side. Oh, that is such a huge relief to see the back of Pitt. To get the big fella in, I think that's going to be absolutely massive. Look, I could be bringing in, you know, 50 to 100 extra points on field each week. So, look, I'll tell you what, I didn't budget to have to spend this much. I was hoping to pay, you know, 20 to 30K less, but it's money well spent. So the big fella is in. And as I said, he's going to make my side look a whole lot better. Now, as I said last week in the forward line, I just had a gut feeling that this bloke had a huge game in him soon, and that proved to be the case. He's officially arrived in 2020, and track, he's arrived in a big way, score of 160 on the weekend, averaging 116, has an extra game up his sleeve. That's very good news for owners. And it was also really, really good to see him finally play a full four-quarter performance and actually build on his strong first half and keep his scoring ticking north. Dusty, look, it wasn't his best game, wasn't his worst game, but managed to turn up, which is great. If he can give me, say, 100 flat from here, then I'm pretty happy, to be honest. Dev Smith, geez, he, he does some dumb, dumb stuff, this bloke. Such an undisciplined game by him. Some late hits off the ball. Look, arguably, there wasn't much in one of them, but if he's going to test the waters and put himself in those positions, then he has to be prepared to cop the consequences. You know, we were patting ourselves on the back after the first couple of rounds for selecting him, and now we're all pulling out our hair. And I don't think I can afford to trade him as I want to focus on getting rookies off the field first. But if he's going to give us rookie-like scores, then our hands may be forced with him. So come on, Dev, mate. Get your act together. Get your head in the game. If you want to show some toughness and aggression, try showing some leadership by putting your head over the ball and stop with the cheap shots and silly acts because it's killing our super coach sides. Killing us, mate. Come on. All right. I'll just go on to Isaac Rankin here. Look, what do you say about this kid? My advice is if you're new to the game, you're looking for a team to support, jump on the Gold Coast bandwagon now because you're in for a real treat in the next decade if these blokes decide to stay together. The words freak, you know, X Factor. Well, to be honest, they don't even give justice to Rankin. He's just another planet with his skills and goal sense. And what a pleasure it's going to be to have him in our sides. But look, remember to expect a 40-odd along the way as he'll be sure to have some quieter games. But if anyone can score well in a small forward role, it's Rankin. And how good was that goal as well from his clearance? You know, this bloke is just absolutely elite in, in every way, Rankin. I'm just super impressed with this bloke. On to Taylor, well, actually rated his game. Thought he had some really nice moments. I'm really tempted to hang on to him for a while, but it is tempting to move him on for Baz this week. I think I'll need to maybe make that move happen from trailer to Baz. But, um, yeah, the other bloke here, Max King, he's also on the chopping blocks. You know, a couple of goals, nothing too special. So I'll have to, yeah, look, it'll be out of King and Taylor that will go for me this week. Um... But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. A um, little bit of useless info as well on Taylor, who's actually really good mates with uh, Rayner, who's actually having a huge impact on games with minimal disposals, I know. Not terrific for Supercoach, but um, look, I see some real Dusty and Petrucka-like qualities in Rayner, and I've got some really, really high hope for him. Arts, well, yeah, it was frustrating watching this bloke play on the weekend. Missed three absolute sodas for goal, but then kicked a couple in the second half, which was handy. Could well have been a 90-plus score for him. I think he had enough opportunities to put his hand up for selection again next week. And a two-goal game from a small pressure forward is always a pretty good result. And Sturt, he didn't play. I'm currently using him as a non-playing loop in my forward line while he recovers from his injury. So you've obviously seen the first trade that I've made there. As I said, I'm either going to trade out Taylor or King and get him Baz. So just for now, I'll trade out King. There we go. But look, I'm finally joining the Baz party. I just think his price, it's too good to refuse. He's a gun. And I can't believe I'm saying this after my man love for Sam Walsh last year. But I think I'm almost starting to agree and sway George's way and think Smith could be the better long-term player. Although Walsh played one of his best games on the weekend and went to another level in my books due to that really courageous mark. And it was something I hadn't really seen from Walsh. So I was super impressed. But... 
Enough talking about Walsh. Baz comes in after his injury-affected score rolls out of his system, and he'll be a really welcome addition to the side. So I decided to pass on Whitfield for Baz as I was focused on doubling down last week. And the week before that, I decided to bring Ridley into the side. So I hope that that ends up being the right decision. But I'm backing Smith to average higher than Whitfield for the remainder of the season. And on a side note, he loves the old one too, doesn't he, Whitfield? A couple of bad turnovers by him with that second chip kick though. But I found myself barracking against Baz every week simply because I don't have him. And it hasn't been fun because I love him as a player, but I can finally start to barrack hard for him, which will be great. So that's it from me. I hope you had a successful week, guys. I'm really looking forward to this week because I'll finally be able to enjoy the fruits of Max Gorn's labor and give a bit of a fist pump whenever the best mullet in the game gets a possession. So as always, stay tuned for the stock market video. I'll do my best to get that out tomorrow night. And as I said, stay tuned for the upcoming podcast I'm doing with Spills as well. I'm going to talk some Supercoach with him. Really looking forward to that. And as always, don't forget to sign up for the Supercoach with DR subscriber group and get in the running for that small cash prize. So take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.